Dirty pop. Yo. American Pop, released in 1981 and is directed by Ralph Backish, who has also directed such films like Fritz the Cat, Heavy Traffic, Wizards, and The Lord of the Rings. Not the tremendous live action movies that we know and love from the early 2000s. This is the animated feature from the 1970s. Same style of animation though. And this film is starring the voices of Ron Thompson, Lisa Jane Persky, Jeffrey Lippa, Richard Singer, Jerry Holland, and Muse Small. And the reason why we're talking about a American Pop today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my friends, Susie Lemire. You actually sent in this with your The Gentleman recommendation, so I can't thank you enough for that. I have never heard of this film before. The only thing that I've seen from this director is that Lord of the Rings animation film, and the animation, like, I had no idea what it was called or how they were able to do it. It's actually called rotoscoping, which is where they film the actual scene and then animators draw over top of what they actually filmed, which is actually really cool and explains a lot, but I think is also kind of detrimental to how this story connected with me. But we'll talk about that here in a second. Thank you very much, Susie, for your recommendation and donation. If anyone else out there also want to help support me and contribute to this channel, you can make a PayPal donation by clicking on the donate button on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, and if you have a movie that you really want me to watch and review and give you a shout on the channel for, you can attach your movie with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and publish my review of it as quickly as I possibly can for you. American Pop follows four generations of Russian Jewish immigrants in their journey to achieve the American dream, and those journeys are influenced by the history of America, what is happening in the world at that current time, and the product of the music that is being produced at that time as well. We have a young boy who aspires to be a performer in the time of burlesque, and he eventually has a kid who becomes a magnificent piano player, but goes off to fight in World War II, and he also also has a kid that feels lost and runs away from home and becomes a drug addict during the 1960s. Then he also inspires a young aspiring musician who listens to his music and becomes one big pop star. I mean, that's the general gist of, of everything. I didn't spoil a lot or how people met their demises. So you'll just have to watch the movie to find out how that happens. But two of the big things that this film is known for, of course, it's known for its amazing soundtrack. We have songs here from Bob Seger, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, like the biggest names in the history of rock and roll and the history of music. So if you're going to put them all into one big soundtrack, of course, it's just going to be amazing. But it's also known for the rotoscoping animation style, which I never knew what it was called or how it was done. So researching it for this film, it makes a lot of sense and explains a lot of how the animation and the movements, the body movements of these characters feel so realistic. It's because it was actually realistic. It's just these animators drawing over the realistic movements of what's being captured on camera. The trouble with that, though, and the main struggle that I have with this movie is connecting to these characters through the emotions on their face. These characters in this film are emotionless. They're basically faceless. There are times when the dialogue is happening and mouths should be moving and because of the intricacies of how the animation style is, the mouth isn't moving. And if the mouth is moving, the muscles and the skin texture around the mouth and around the face and the eyebrows going up, those aren't moving at all. So it just feels like they're ventriloquist dolls, but no one is pulling the strings. And I know ventriloquist is not a marionette, so that thing that I just said makes no sense. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. Needless to say, this film was a struggle for me. The story looks good though on paper. Seeing the course of this family and this heritage and this culture being passed down from generation to generation and how that changes over time. It's a great representation of what art is. Art is a mirror to society. It's not one set thing. It changes with the cultures. It changes with the times. It changes with the society. All of that is brilliant and looks good on paper. It's just, I can't connect to these characters 
because I get no emotion and I get no, I get nothing from them. And a lot of times the voice acting that's attached with the animation, it doesn't feel like it matches for me or it feels very caricature like like it doesn't feel real to me. Zalmi, after he loses his voice, sounds very like this and oh, hey Mickey, yeah, I'm gonna go down to the docks and pop some caps in this motherfucker. And it gets even worse when we get to Tony, who is the... I guess the third generation in this story and you know he gets addicted to heroin and crack and goes off and writes songs for a band and this is the 1960s and the 70s and he has this Brooklyn accent but he sounds very whiny where's the heroin I want it what are you talking about give me a guitar I'm gonna pawn it and then I'm gonna re-pawn it oh my god would you shut up and it's very frustrating because this is the generation and this is the character that the movie focuses the most on which is really frustrating i wish it focused more on the previous generations because when we get to this guy he has a longer journey and it's not so dramatic and it doesn't have an epic ending that the other two had so to focus on it it's just so frustrating and annoying what are you talking about all i want is the heroin oh why did you go off without me i have songs i write songs for you why do i need to take care of her you're the one who married her come on i feel like i'm over exaggerating but I know I'm not, because that's exactly how that character sounded. This movie, though, does present the fact that music, that art, does live through everyday life, especially music. We have music everywhere, whether it's a song that we have in our head, a song that plays on the radio, in the car as we're driving to work, or music from a commercial that's playing on a billboard as we walk home from work, or walk to school, or walk to church, or whatever. Music is always there, and it's always influencing us, and it's always changing with us. So, it's frustrating. This movie has so many like metaphorical and philosophical points that I absolutely love, but when you get down to the basic ideas like story, plot, and character, I don't give two shits. And sadly, it's all from the voice acting and the animation. The animation, while with the whole body and the massive, like, wide scenes that we have here, is very impressive. But then when we kind of slow things down and get close-in zooms of these characters and of their faces, it's just blank. There's nothing there, and I can't connect. And if I can't connect... I don't care about the story. I know this movie is revered, though, by a lot of people, so I know that I'm probably in the minority when I talk about my disapproval of this film in certain ways, but I, I can't help it if I don't feel connected to the story. I can't... I can't comment positive things, but I do know that there is some great things in here. I'm gonna give American Pop two and a half out of five Blu-rays. I found that if you have a goal, that you might not reach it. But if you don't have one, then you are never disappointed. And I gotta tell you, it feels phenomenal. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm gonna be watching next. We've been talking about PayPal donations over the last couple of weeks. This past October, I did all scary movies. So now let's just go back to the original concept for this channel. We're gonna be selecting from all the movies that I've owned and have been recommended to me. We're just gonna select them at random. So let's take a look. Three ten to you, ma. And I'm going to assume it's the remake with Christian Bale and Russell Crowe, because that's the one I own. And from what I remember, I've only seen it once, but it is a badass movie. So awesome! I I've been wanting, I've been meaning to watch it again, just never getting around to it. But now I can, because it came up on the random generator, and that's saying a lot for me. I'm not a big western guy, but I remember watching it many years ago and thinking like, this movie is pretty badass. So we'll check it out again next time. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do, just attach your movie recommendation with your donation, and if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout out on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, if you've seen American Pop, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below, let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of 310 to Yuma. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.